Hey guys, um, we're here in Utah, in fact, in front of the Tony M mine, um, and we've just been down uh, underground, uh, having a look at what's been left behind. And Marty, you can tell us all about what, what's going on here. So I said, sure. as you pick this thing up, when was that? So we, we got this in 2021, that when the transaction actually closed, you know, it was in the works for quite some time. Um, we bought this from Energy Fuels as part of a package of three fully permitted past producing mines. Tony M had recently had a, uh, a 43-101 completed on it. We updated that in 2022. And uh, so we've got about 8.8 .8 million pounds at roughly 0.28% indicated and inferred. And uh, yeah, now we've, uh, you know, after about 18 months of hard work of lining up contractors, doing a lot of engineering work in the background and buying equipment and all the things that go along with it, we finally got an underground just at the end of July. And there's been a lot of uh, refurbishment and rehab work going on. It has, it has. Now, I think obviously, clearly investors watching this, listening to this, reading about this are going to be asking quite a simple question. When does this thing get into production? It's a little bit of work to, to, that has happened so far and a little bit more work that needs to happen to kind of get to that stage. Can you sort of uh, tell us what was the setup? You need to find the right people, first of all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we started out, we had a handful of people working on a Toronto and a couple guys on the ground. And we've got a fantastic team down here um, that we've assembled now. And most recently we've uh, picked up a, you know, a fantastic uh, engineer who's our director of US operations and engineering. Um, he joins us, you know, he's 20 plus years experience as uh, an engineer and was running, you know, most recently one of the uh, largest uh, gold mines in, in North America. And, uh, you know, he's taking control here and he's moving things along. Uh, you know, the guys are in there just uh, making sure that it's a safe place to work. Uh, so, as you saw earlier, the guys are bolting up the back and uh, knocking down the loose. And uh, following that, we'll get uh, the exploration team in there mapping things out and uh, doing a 3D image of the ore body and make sure that syncs up with what we think we've got uh, from uh, a resource standpoint. Start to do some design work and some engineering work and figure out how we can most efficiently mine this. Well, I think that we've just been through an hour's um, health and safety briefing. So, you know, mining is about safe mining. You want everyone to come and go get home. So, again, that's been a big part of the development yes. here. Um, much more to do? Um, I mean, there's going to be ad obviously additional team members. And now you guys have gone through the induction, so you're welcome to come move down to Tikaboo and join us. And yeah. You know, to, to, talking of health and safety, planes. I think we're about to get run over. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I think the guys are coming. Let's step over to the side here. <laughs> But um, so they, these are the guys, part of the team who've been down there sort of fixing things. But the surprising thing is there doesn't seem like much more to do. It was left and we handed over in pretty good condition. It, it was in very good condition when we, uh, when we got it, you know, and we weren't quite sure what, uh, what it would look like when we got underground, you know. The, you can see this was just cut out. You can actually see where they, uh, they cut out the steel. Yeah. And uh, so we put these gates on ourselves. Um, so there, you know, it was a bit of uh, a question. Is it going to be in there? Is it, it was Schrodinger's mine, right? And so we got in and it was actually in fantastic shape. It was, you know, pretty much as described by uh, Mark Chalmers at Energy Fuels when he sold it to us. Mm -hmm. And we got in there, the guys are doing the work. And obviously you guys have come into a heading that's had some work done on it. Yep. As we move further and further in, um, you know, you never know what you're going to see, but uh, you know, the expectation is that uh, it's, it's going to be as described. Well, we had a little hand held XRF machine yep. down there. We, we tested a few, so some, some very high grade uranium and vanadium yes. as well. And, I, I, and that was surprising to me. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, that high grade vanadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that high, high number of vanadium was, uh, was surprising to me, but uh, yeah, some, uh, some great uh, uranium numbers there. Right, and Tyler's going to, so obviously he, he took us around and did all this sort of technical speak and yes. he's pointing out, what, you know, how you identify where to go and maybe even how you come out the mining components. I thought it was quite interesting. Yes, um, and, and you know, I think you guys got some uh, some shots of Tyler doing that. And, and it's really interesting now that you have these things like an XRF, it really allows production to move forward much more quickly because you can go up to the face and there's no guessing that work, there's no guesswork anymore. Um, certainly, well, I shouldn't say none, but uh, yeah. it's, you know, skilled interpretation. So getting in there with the XRF and then, you know, painting the face up where the, uh, the, the miners need to come in and you see how the guy's working away. Yeah. He'll paint up the face, they'll come in and, you know, be able to bolt it or uh, drill it up efficiently, load it up and blast. Yeah, and I think the other thing people are excited about is the possibility of ore sourcing as well. Yes. Yep. Um, you know, that's a part of it. Either way, it's going to go really well. 
but certainly we're looking at some new opportunities with ore sorting to uh, increase the efficiencies at the face and then also f from a haulage standpoint. Right, okay. Now, it's kind of, uh, I don't think there's any secret that uh, ISA Energy have cash, have access to cash to do what you want to do. Yes. But at the same time, your responsibility is get this thing up and running and you know, ramped up to capacity and beyond. So like, just, so what are we looking at day one? What's that? What's the mind look like? Um, well, I mean, the other thing I'm also responsible for is health and safety. So that's actually number one on the list. Um, and then it's, you know, moving things along. But uh, really, I mean, we're probably looking in the first year, my guess is, you know, the 250,000 pounds a year mark. Right. And from there, we're really looking at uh, multiples of that you know, within a reasonable time frame. I mean, if we look historically at the production back in the 70s, you know, there was some money spent on the mine. Um, they weren't producing numbers anything like that. But uh, when Denison got back into it in the 2000s, that's, those are the type of numbers they were looking at. And the price dropped so quickly, they didn't have an opportunity to ramp up. I mean, they hadn't even re reached their full production rates. So uh, we certainly expect to hit those and more. I mean, you guys have seen the maps. We've got lots of headings to go to, lots of zones to go to. So there's an opportunity here to really produce some uh, decent numbers. And, you know, with the other mines we've got in the area, you know, I, I, I don't see, uh, you know, a, a reason why we probably couldn't hit maybe the million plus a year mark. Right, because I think we'll, starting with Tony M, we'll, we'll come on to the other assets in a second. You've got 18 miles of tunnel, tunnels down there. You got a lot of uh, ex exposed rocks uh, to explore and try and understand. Yep, it's a good start. It, it's a very good start. And I mean, you know, as I said, we we haven't finished the engineering work, and once we get in there and get this 3D mapping done, we'll get the engineers in there and help us how to figure it out how to do this most efficiently. Right. So no, these consulting groups, not just the engineers, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll get a number of guys behind us to help out. Right. And I think that the idea is obviously you got m multiple faces you're going to be getting yes. after yep. at the same time. That's going to help with the kind of ramp up just from Tony M. Uh, absolutely. Right. Um, lots of places to go to down there. Right. Okay. Well, look, look we're, 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 we're a bit short for time, but we've got to dash off to the, ne the next <laughs> venue, yes. which is why Mesa Mill. But before we go there, exploration here at Tony M is, um, gonna, is part of um, the remit, part of the idea to kind of help understand what's going on around here. And I think Tom's going to swing around and give, you, give us a sense of the kind of topography we're looking at. And this is just one small part of it. So for you, exploration is going to involve what? Have you got the team in place to do that today? Uh, absolutely. So um, you met Tyler and you met uh, some of the other guys that do work out here with Tyler, but uh, there's other folks that uh, work for the company that aren't down here today. And, uh, you know, we do also reach out to some additional, uh, you know, exploration groups to help us out when uh, when we, we get into that because we don't necessarily need to keep those full numbers of staff on site, but yeah. certainly you saw where we expanded the footprint um, into Flatiron, and when that gets up and running full steam, um, you know, we'll start to add more bodies to the crew, and Tyler's, uh, you know, a very experienced guy, and I think people are starting to recognize the type of good work that we're doing here, and so we get a lot of inbound attraction for, uh, for good employees. Yeah, and I think you've kind of got, well, certainly what's demonstrated to us this morning, a very large footprint that you're going to be targeting yes um slice of northwest i think of yes there. that's right yeah um you got the money to do it it's a question of um having the team support and infrastructure which is all being built up yes um to, towards that timing can we come to timing of, of you know when you can start are you ready to go when so we're fully permitted now right um you know and and i'll, I'll say I, we've talked about some hypothetical production numbers and that's what the engineering work is going to show is what we can do. We have an idea just based on past production and then just, you know, experience. And uh, it'll be that engineering work that shows it. We expect that to begin in the next, you know, couple months. And I'm hoping to be able to have some results to put out in Q1 of next year, Q1-ish. And when White Mesa is ready to go, we're hoping to be ready there to deliver a feed to the mill. And I guess that helps determine for you timing in terms of that kind of aggressive expansion, not just here, but with the other two assets as well. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, we do it all. You know, we, we don't look at these as one-offs, right? You know, we've got Dr. Daryl Clark, who's doing amazing work. And, I mean, he oversees all the exploration here. And he's got a budget and teams globally that he's managing. So we have to make decisions in terms of where we're going to go, uh, numbers. And, you know, we're doing a massive work program up in the, uh, the basin, which is another story. But it all fits in as uh, pieces of the puzzle, so that those are considerations we have to uh, to make as well. So, being a U.S. producer, that must be something 
you and everyone else is looking forward to be. Very excited, very excited. Um, and, you know, working in Utah is exceptional. You know, I've worked in a lot of places around the world. And I'll tell you, the, uh, you know, the political situation here and the regulatory regime is phenomenal. Um, very supportive. Uh, you know, everyone wants to see this go. They want to see it open. And uh, they want Utah to be back in, you know, where they were before historically as one of the top producing uranium jurisdictions in the world. I think the other thing I'm intrigued about is the getting into production, not just says, well, here's some near-term revenue. Yes. And obviously expansion um, thereof in terms of scaling up. But it it shows people you are producers. You can mine. Yes. And what next in in a space which perhaps doesn't have a skill set to do much about it? Well, I I think what we've got, as you mentioned, we've got access to capital. We do have a strong treasury right now. Uh, We get into production. And once we get into production, we're going to start to see I, see, I think, other opportunities present themselves to us um, so we can take advantage of our producer status, our access to capital, and uh, and go from there. Right, and of course, a big important part of that is the relationship with uh, Energy Fuels. Yes. We're off to see Mark Chalmers in a second down at White Mesa. Um, you're the only company that seems to be able to negotiate um, them processing through that mill. Um, you've got to be pleased about that. Very pleased. I mean, you know, Mark's a good friend of ours. He's a very strong supporter. We like Mark a lot. We work closely with them. You know, they help us out here a lot. Um, we, we, you know, we uh, lean on them for advice. Mark's a very smart guy, and uh, he's really, I think, counting on us too to uh, meet our end of the bargain and deliver uh, feed to the mill. 